Hello, this is Sandy Sims with SDS Digital and the Accord to Querula. In this tutorial, we'll cover the CV input functions. Bidirectional jacks CC5, CC6, and clock out will be used to get CV and triggers into the CQRL. First, we'll need a sequence to modify with the CV inputs. In the playlist, an empty tracks tracker block can be added. Scrolling past the highest tracks letter, which is A for now, will allow importing from another song project. If playing, it can be auditioned live. The block isn't officially added yet, so it won't play. There, now we can audition. This one sounds okay for our purposes. Configuring the CV inputs is done in the MIDI push menu. Right near the top, you'll find direction, function, and MIDI channel settings for each jack. First, make sure the jack is set to be an input. If it's an output, then CV mode quick box is used to configure it, which is covered in a different tutorial. So let's use jack CC5 to check out the functions. Function CC number can be used to do a CV to MIDI for any MIDI CC on any channel. The piano's channel is channel 7, so we'll set that. An obvious CC choice for the purpose of this tutorial is CC7, which is the level control. So let's patch a complex LFO to CC5 jack. With CV to MIDI, there's a fair chunk of data in the MIDI stream when doing this, but the Sequoia will manage it if it starts getting too dense. So when I unplug the LFO, the voltage drops to zero and the level disappears. This can be reset by simply clicking on the MIDI push quick box button. Other sources of CV can be more predictable for level, like a CV sequence. But some CCs, like for cut filter or envelope decay in a synth, may be better served with more chaos. Another CV input function is pitch bending. This opens up a few possibilities with a sequencer, but I'll use it with the trusty LFO to start with. The function is bipolar, so to swing a note lower, a minus voltage is required, which this LFO has. Using a CV sequencer is a lot more fun with the pitch bend. This ornament in crime is being clocked from another source, by the way. The Sequoia has the facility to set the bend range as well. Scrolling down a bit. Here it is. I'll set it for 12 semitones. To send the update to the synth, you must hit the MIDI push. If left this way and saved, loading the song project will send it automatically when it's loading. Much more interesting. The LFO is a bit much though, so I'll leave it offset to demonstrate how clicking MIDI push will also reset the pitch bend, which again is also done when any project loads. The next CV input function is aftertouch. I 
haven't had this synth long enough to know how to set up Aftertouch yet, so here's what MIDI AUX is saying. The next CV input functions are Gate, Note, and Velocity. One jack can be used in tandem with other input jacks to play MIDI notes. I'll tap some gates into the RITEM module first. I have no tempo reference going, so this will likely sound awful. One jack set to gate won't do anything by itself, but if another is set to note, then the gate will trigger notes on the set channel. Setting CC jack to note will get us some sounds. This is triggering a VCO because I left CC jack set to channel 1, which is configured to gate and CV outputs by default. This is the zero volt note, so I'll patch a CV in from the LFO. Speed up the RITEM, which is on the same clock as the Sequerolo, by the way. Even though my tapping isn't accurately with the clock. This inline attenuator is stealing all the voltage. So now we have a chaotic note sequence with a gate and a note CV, but it's all random. This mess can be beaten into submission with a pair of special input modifiers that will set transpose and scale to whatever the song loop effects is set to, or song effects for short. I'll turn them on and set them in song effects. Each song loop, whether they are real loops or just empty ones, has its own transpose offset and scale. I'll also set them to send to tracks and uh, layers for the next part. In the song effects main setup, the transpose can be changed also. There, now you can already hear the difference. These CV notes are pretty low, but they will act as a bass backing with our track sequence. Another jack can be used to control the velocity of these notes. The jack's channel must be the same as the others. It's gone silent because there is no voltage on the jack. The clock out can always be used as an input, unless you need it to grab a clock from a MIDI clock. Let's stop using my sloppy tapped-in cadence for a proper trigger sequence. The notes are pretty low, so I'll transpose them up some. CV input note is included with the transpose by default, but it can be turned off to be unaffected. Depends on how you want to use it, I guess. Also, MIDI input can be transposed and scaled as well, so one can just bang on the keys and still <laughs> sound good. 
so up two octaves. But also takes tracks up with it. One of the cool things about CV input notes is that you can record them with a layer or tracks QuickBox. We'll use layer for this example. I'll arm it to record four bars. Okay, four bars, but then stop recording, as it will be tricky to stop the gates at a proper moment to get a continuous layer loop. So set it to one shot. Hit play to start. There, we have a layer loop recording of our CV sequence. The ornament and crime clock is different from the sequirlels clock, so it's not aligned at all. But notice how our plus two octave transpose has been added to the layer plane. This is why transpose has options. Just taking the transpose down means the input notes will again be very low. The last thing with the CV input function notes is that a gate is not really required. As there must be a CV change to trigger a note, and the length of the notes is fixed, it does have some limitations, but it's certainly a CV to MIDI chord converter. There can be no jack set as MIDI gate before this mode becomes active. I did two note chords because the ornament in crime only has two sequences, but we could add a third. Next in the CV input function lineup is play arm. A pulse on the input will start the sequirlel playing, but only at beat one. So it's more useful as a remote switch from a module or pedal out that outputs a active trigger. Just starting the clock with the play armed will actually start the sequirlel. It must be a trigger, meaning it must change by at least four volts immediately or it will be ignored, which is why the ornament and crime CV output did not set it. This RITEM gate is too fast and keeps rearming at or after the clock's beat zero, so it won't actually play until that stops. The next CV input function is similar, stop arm. It acts the same way with multiple triggers. These behaviors might be changed by release time. The last and most exciting CV input function, in my opinion, is learn. Learn lets you assign any internal parameter to be modified by the CV input. Just click on the empty space below it and the main screen appears so you can go find a parameter. I'll select the tracks one tracker's size parameter for the fun of it. Learn is similar to MIDI Remote Learn in that it obeys the rules of the parameter as if you were setting it from the panel. This will work with most parameters, but some, like in Main Settings or the Remote Control menu, don't, as it would be illogical and not very useful to change the screensaver timeout via Remote Control.
The size changes on each loop, so the updates can be slow if you don't have the voltage trimmed. I'll use this inline attenuator to keep it under control as track sequences can be 64 steps. There is also a top and bottom setting that can be controlled this way, but if the bottom is higher than the top, only one step will play, of course. Now let's use the clock out CV in jack to control that track's note mirror parameter. Mirror reflects notes above and below the set range to the opposite side. So for example, a minor chord would end up playing as a major chord on the other side. You can hear the LFO jumping into the mirror range occasionally. In the interest of brevity, I won't try adjusting the LFO's offset and leave it as is. For the last parameter on jack CC6 input, we'll try the track's clock multiplier. The clock will only change at the loop point, so it's okay to use a LFO or other non-step source for this. I'll use the RITEM CV output so you can see the knob position. All of these settings are of course saved with the song project, and if the inputs don't change to start, or the jacks are empty, the original parameter values will be left alone. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the CV input functions of the SQLL. Until the next tutorial, I'm Sandy Sims. Keep on patching!